Hello and welcome to Lessons in Logos with Dr. Philip Marshall, Professor of Biblical Languages with the Department of Classics and Biblical Languages at Houston Baptist University. The Lessons in Logos video series is designed to help you make the most of Logos Bible software for your Bible study and your academic research. So thank you for joining us. What I want to do today is a little bit different. Um, I did a training session several weeks ago for our students at, at Houston Baptist University. And uh, what I was teaching them was how to make use of something called Logos 8 Basic. You may not be aware, but uh, if you do not yet own your own copy of Logos Bible software, you can actually test drive the software by going to Logos's website and downloading a free version of their software called, called Logos 8 Basic. And you can get a, a sense for what it's like to use the software. There's about 40 something resources that come free, so it doesn't cost you any money. And, uh, and I did some training with our students to help them get started with it. And I want to share that with you. So I've divided that training into two parts, and I'm going to do half of it on this video, and we'll do the second half on another video. And uh, I'd love for you to follow along. If you don't have a version of Logos Bible software yet, then you should head on over to Logos.com, and I'm going to show you how to download that Logos 8 basic version. So once you've downloaded your copy of Logos 8 basic, or if you're using Logo 7, Logos 8, or Logos 9. Uh, you can follow along, learn to do some of the things I'm explaining. Uh, what, I'm, what we're going through uh, is something that you can use pretty much with any version of Logos. So let's get started. Go ahead and follow along as I go to the web browser and show you how to download your copy. I'm going to pull up my web browser right here, and um, you're going to go to Logos.com. So click in Logos.com. And, uh, and then whenever you get there, you're going to see uh, this first little tab here. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, uh, pull down. You don't have to click on it. And you're going to look at where it says Try Logos for Free. So just click that. And once you do, you're going to see Free Bible Software Announcement here and get Basic Free. Logos 8 was the version of Logos right before the most recent one came out of about three or four weeks ago, Logos 9. So uh, Logos is making Logos 8 available for free in a very basic pared down version. So uh, you'll just uh, click Get Basic for free, and it's going to uh, go to a, um, a little shopping cart here, and you're going to click Next. And it is going to ask you to create an account. You're not going to have to put in any payment information for this. Uh, because the product is free, won't cost you anything, you don't have to give a credit card, but you do need to create an account using uh, an email address so that uh, Logos knows who you are and, um, and can tie the resources that come free with you in particular once you download the software. So go ahead and do that, and then you're going to go through the process of downloading everything. And once that happens, then come back to the video and you can uh, listen in on the training about how to get started with using Logos. Okay, so enjoy. Welcome everybody to Lessons in Logos. So we're here today to do some training on Logos 8 Basic. So I, I want to thank the Greek class for coming. It's great that we can actually meet and talk about how to make use of Logos Bible software. Uh, remember, this is a free version of Logos, Logos 8 Basic, and uh, hopefully you've all downloaded this uh, to your computers and you've got those open so that we can actually try to walk through how to get started and use some of the, the wonderful tools of Logos Bible software. Um, everybody should have a handout, so hopefully you've got that. And uh, let's, uh, let's get started now. This, uh, this is a free version of Logos. If you want to upgrade to a, a higher level, uh, buy a package and that sort of thing, you're certainly free to do that. But this is something that you don't have to pay for in order to access. Logos is, has been really gracious. I have the handout in front of you. You'll notice that it, it says, don't forget free book of the month with Logos. And, um, I made myself a note there because I wanted to uh, explain to you that when you uh, have a Logos account, you're able to take advantage of their free book of the month every every month. So 
if you've got your your screen open and uh, your your software's running, and you look up at the top left hand corner, you should see a little home icon. Um, Logos normally opens up to what's called the home page, uh, but if you don't have it open right now, then click on that little icon there, and you should see uh, some curated material that will pop up here for you. Uh, the curated material is uh, is really designed to get you interested in in logos and the things that are available to you inside your logo to you inside your logos Bible software program. Uh, but uh, but you'll always uh, notice different ads and things like that as well. And one of the things that they like to put on here is the free book of the month. And uh, this month, the uh, the free book of the month is a Romans commentary by William Hendrickson. So. Uh, I try to take advantage of the free book of the month uh, as often as I can remember to do so. And I want to encourage you to go ahead and and uh, and grab that free book of the month as well. Romans commentaries are awesome because the book of Romans is awesome. And the uh, the William Hendricks- Hendrickson uh, Simon Kistemacher series that this is a part of is a really great series. So So go ahead and avail yourself of that free book of the month. All right? Now, let's walk through navigating Logos. For how many of you in this classroom here, is this your first time uh, actually using Logos? First time uh, actually using Logos. All right, so that's most of you. Well, I guess we can consider this our maiden voyage then, huh? First, let's talk about the library. Uh, In the library, you'll have your resources that you legally have access to. Now, you can buy packages, uh, Bible software packages, where you can sort of front load your resources and you can buy those, uh, those packages based on your own particular interests. So if you're interested in biblical languages, you might be able to buy a biblical languages package, and it's going to cram in a bunch of resources that are language related, and it will allow you then to perhaps... Uh, have access to these things in a way that's cheaper than if you were to buy the paper resources all individually uh, by themselves. Maybe you have a particular something like that. Once you buy a package, those resources belong to you, and then they'll follow you wherever you go. You uh, open up Logos on a, on a, on a, on a mobile app, you're going to have access to the, the, the resources in your package. You open it on your your desktop application, you're going to be able to access whatever you have purchased by way of resources. Those will always be in your library, no matter what device you're using. So let's talk about navigating your library. If you want to view the resources in your library, there are a couple of ways to do it. You saw the little icon to get to your homepage, and right next to it, you'll find a little icon for your library. Go ahead and click that, and you're going to notice that it's going to pull up a library window. And that library window is going to sit on top of your homepage, on top of your homepage. There's different ways to view your library. I'm going to click on title here to show my title. Yours may look a little bit different uh, than mine. Mine looks this way because I've been tinkering around with it. But uh, I'll try to show you a little bit later how to change the views on your, your, your uh, library screen. But notice that we've opened the library window on top of the home page. But notice that we've opened the library window on top of the home page. If I go and click on the home page, what's going to happen to my library window? Right, it's going to disappear and the home page will pop up in its place again. I don't find this to be a helpful way to view my library because it keeps disappearing every time I click outside the window. So since I don't like my window disappearing on me, uh, here's what I like to do. Uh, I would like to pull it up into a permanent window, and I do that by right-clicking on that library icon. So go ahead and right-click on it. Do you see where it says Open in a new tab? Go ahead and click on that expression, open in a new tab. That's going to create 
a library window inside of a tile. So you'll have a panel open inside your tile, and now you can click anywhere where on your software screen, and your library is going to stay put. It's not going to disappear on you. Now, if I click within the tile on a different resource, then the library will disappear because I've activated a different uh, uh, panel resource. Uh, but um, I can go back to it. But, but clicking in anything else isn't going to cause the library to disappear. Now, you can also right-click on your library icon and um, open your library in a floating window. A floating window is a window that, that exists all by itself, and it's one that you can expand so you can get a much better and bigger view of your library. And that can be helpful because uh, when I when I uh, click when I open it in a, in just a tile, um, it shoves it into a small um, small part of the of the screen. Whereas this is much bigger, this is much bigger. It turns out that you can take any resource that you have and open it up as a floating window. So let's take the Lexham English Bible for example. If I want to open this into a floating panel, I click on the three buttons there. And then it's going to open up a panel menu and go down to float this panel and click that. And that'll open it up into its own window. You can resize it. You can expand it to make it full screen. Or you can just drag the edges to resize it in a, a less dramatic fashion. And if you want to stop viewing it in a floating panel, then click on those three dots for the panel uh, resource menu and then uh, click on Dock This Panel, and that will put it back into a tile. Anyhow, uh, maybe that's helpful for you, so you can try that out. Now, let's talk about viewing your library. And I think for the better is if I go to my floating window for the library, that's going to be a bit easier for you to see. Actually, let, let me go back, and I want to... Um, to, to reset my, my tiles here so that we can uh, look at this uh, a little bit more. I want to go to my layouts here and, and, and redo my layout for what I'm going to talk about now. When I got rid of my Bible, it, it ended up changing my layout, and I need to reestablish it. Now, this is how Logos lays out everything. What, what we're actually looking at is, is a big window. And this window is subdivided into what we call tiles. So the, the big window subdivides into smaller segments called tiles. It may not be very clear, may be hard to see, but on the left-hand side, that, that is a tile. And then in the middle, and then in the middle, up above, there's a tile. And then there's another tile below that in the middle. Now, let, let me just for a moment close out uh, the, the, the two things on the right side, the Information tab and the King James Version tab there. So now you see I have three tiles open. So on the panel on the left, that tile, I have that tile, which consists of several different panels or tabs, and I can click on different ones inside the tile. Maybe you can think of it this way, using this sort of an analogy. This is something that Morris Proctor, the official trainer for Logos, once, once used. Imagine that you have um, your, your, your big window uh, and, well, actually, imagine a bookshelf, right? Your bookshelf shelf is the, the large structure that your books are on, and that bookshelf um, is subdivided into shelves on the bookshelf. And then within those shelves, you have individual books. Your big window, uh, this, this whole window, uh, is like your bookshelf. Uh, your windows are subdivided into tiles. Those are your shelves. And then within each tile, you have individual resources those tabs represent individual resources. Those are like books that sit on the bookshelf. Just like I can add a book to a shelf, I can go to a tile and add a new resource by, by clicking the plus sign and, and opening up a new one. 
the King James Version, for example. Down below, and have the Faith Life Study Bible open and the Lexham Bible Dictionary. Now, those aren't Bibles, but they are resources, and they provide background information uh, for the Bible study that you're doing. Now, we can uh, work with the way we lay out our library by using something called the Layouts menu. You're going to find that up at the top right-hand corner. You see a a little sort of grayed-out segment of three things there. That's your Layouts menu. And you're going to want to click on that. When you click on it, it's going to give you some options for how you can lay out your library or your open resources. Do you see these grayed out areas here? These represent tile layouts. Each gray square is subdivided, and those individual subdivisions are basically showing you how you can lay out your whole window. So you could do it in terms of of three uh, vertical tiles. You could do uh, three horizontal tiles. You could do four equal uh, tiles. Uh, so, so each grayed out area is a tile layout. A little while ago, I clicked this one that had one tile, a long one on the left, and two smaller ones on the right. But I could click on just the two side-by-side tiles. And let me do that and show you how it looks. When I click it, it's going to rearrange everything into just two tiles instead of three. Before, where I had the two Bibles above and the Bible dictionary and the the Alexum, uh, the, the Faith Life Study Bible below, now all four of them are sitting inside the same tile. In order to see each resource in the tile, I'll have to click on it individually to make it visible instead of another one inside the same tile. Once things share the same, the same tile, you can only look at one resource at a time. Now, if you want to see two resources at the same time that are in the same tile, then you're going to have to pull one of them Uh, into another tile, and that way you could maybe see them side by side. So you can pick so you can pick any sort of layout that you want depending on what you intend to do. You can create your own layout, or you can use one of these preset layouts uh, over here along the top based on certain tasks that you might want to accomplish. So, for example, if you're into journaling and you want to use Logos to engage in Bible journaling, then you can click on the Bible journaling layout. So let's click that, and you'll see that Logos will open up a layout that uh, that has resources available for doing things that involve Bible journaling. So what you get is an English Bible to read. You can see that there's highlighting materials that you can use for highlighting the Bible, and then over on the right, you'll see a, 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 a tab for your um, for note taking. You want to type notes down. So there's all sorts of interesting layouts. Now, for example, on that one, this will open up for you a lectionary to follow, and an English Bible, which then you can read to keep up with the lectionary readings. And then off you go. All right. So now let's go back here. Uh, l- let's say that you have decided uh, how you want to lay out all your materials. Let me reestablish my prior layout here. Um, I'm gonna gonna click on my my layout and and get back uh, to where I was before. So give me just a second here, and uh, we'll get this uh, back to where I want it to be. Okay, so so here's my layout, and this is what I've been tinkering with here. And let's say that I've got open all of the resources for a particular layout that I want to be using. And then I want to save that layout. How do I go about saving a layout where I've done the layout, where I've done the work of getting it exactly the way I want it so that it's always available to me when I set about doing uh, my study with Logos Bible software? Let's say I always want the same Bible to open up, the same commentary to open up for a particular study I'm doing. Uh, maybe a particular lexicon that I always want to be open when I start. How do I do that? How do I save that so that it's always available for me so that when I'm ready to start, everything's open and ready to go? What you're going to do is click on that Layout button and go to the place where it says Now. 
And where it says save as a named layout, you need to click on that. You now have the option to name it, and let's call it New Testament Study. And then you can either click the arrow or enter, and it's going to save that layout. Where do you look to find it? Look over to the find it. Look over to the left under Saved Layouts and see how I now have NT Study there. That was what I named that layout a little while ago. You can create as many layouts as you want based on the different types of study that you are doing. So if you want a layout based on your personal devotional Bible study, you can create a layout for that. And if you want to create a layout where you are doing all the heavy-duty Greek exegesis with all the resources related to the Greek language, then you can create a layout for that. And then you can save it under a different name, and then you're able to switch between your layouts when you move on from one kind of study to another. Now, if you ever make any modifications to an existing layout, let's say you, you update it with uh, adding a new, another resource or you open another resource, and then um, you want to save that new modified uh, layout, uh, how do you do that? Let me show you how. Click that. Let me show you how. Click on that layout icon and go to the layout that you want to update down on the bottom left. You'll see a pull-down arrow. Click on that, and then you'll see the words Update to Current Snapshot, and you want to click on that. That's going to save your layout according to where it stands at that moment, and then we'll reopen it to that whenever you want to start your study. If you don't update to the current snapshot, then the next time you open to that snap to, to that that particular layout, it'll it'll go to the last one you saved. I find being able to use the different layouts very helpful. And you might too. Now, with the very limited number of resources that you'll have available to you in Logos uh, 8 Basic, um, there's really a not, not a whole lot of options for different layouts. But as you build your library, as you end up, you know, perhaps with up, you know, perhaps with thousands of resources, and then you you lay out your workspace in such a way that uh, that that you're maybe doing Greek study uh, for for this particular. Um, uh, set of, 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 of research questions you're pursuing, then it's, it's helpful to, to have a Greek study layout that you can always open up when you're ready to start uh, tackling those questions and issues. Now, how do you get Logos to automatically open up to your saved layout instead of opening up to your homepage? Like I said, it automatically does by default. Let me show you what you're going to do. Find the word tools up above. Once you click Tools, scroll all the way down and find the word Program Settings. This is a program setting issue. And when you click that, it's going to open up a general program settings menu for you. And uh, I need to tell this to quit popping up things for me. Let me, let me click that. Uh, okay, so uh, when you, when you uh, get over here, you're going to look at this very first line. Open Startup to and you'll see several options. Now, opening to a blank layout, layout to me is a colossal waste of time because when you open to a blank layout, you have to uh, uh, lo load all of your resources, which takes time. What I find helpful instead is to click on most recent layout. What that means is wherever your layout was when you close Logos, the next time you restart Logos, it's going to open up your workspace and lay out exactly to where you stopped the last time. And that's often the way I use it. Um, I'm going to stop work, go get dinner, and then I'm going to come right back and want to get right to where I was before when I stopped. Now, the distinction between any and local here probably means that if you, if you click any, then any device that had a layout open, uh, whatever that was, when it closes, that is going to be what opens up the next time and local means on this particular machine. A final option layouts and make that what it automatically opens to every time it restarts. For me, I like most recent layout local. And that way, every time I close logos and then restart it, it's going to go right to where I left off the last time. Does that make sense? All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this 
first uh, part of the Logos 8 basic training, be sure to go to the next video to watch the second half of the training from my session with our HBU students. And, and keep in mind that what we're learning for Logos 8 basic actually applies to all versions of Logos. So the tips on how to, 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 to link and scroll together, which, uh, which we'll see, uh, how to manage library and layouts and things like that. that. That applies to any version of Logos that you may have, whether it's 8, 7, or 9. So, uh, so, so do, um, do check out uh, the next video. Let me take a moment to remind you that if you want to be notified whenever I release new content, uh, be sure to subscribe uh, on YouTube here. You can go to my biblicallanguages.net website and subscribe there. I'll always post the notes that, uh, that I've uploaded something new. Uh, and, and also, uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe to uh, our social media platforms for HBU's Department of Classics and Biblical Languages. We'd love for you to follow us and stay apprised of what's going on with us there. Until then, I'm Philip Marshall wishing you every blessing as together like Ezra, we set our hearts to study God's word, to do it, and to teach it to others.